Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and this is the final video for the Ravnica Allegiance set review for gold, artifacts, and land. So we're finally here. We're finally at the end of this long, long set review. Whew, there are a lot of cards in this set, and there are a lot of good cards in this set as well. So let's hop right in and let's talk about our multicolored cards or the gold cards if you want to talk about them like that. As you can see, there is a amazing to not great uh, scale here. One being amazing, five being not great or unplayable. We'll be talking about limited, which is draft and sealed, and of course standard as it applies to these cards. So first up, we have Absorb here, a three mana instant counter target spell. You gain three life. Now this is a reprint for us. Very good card in most environments for standard. I'm not so sure if this card is going to be taking off rather in standard itself feels like it might but again we have a lot of other good counters right now especially quench from this set as well we talked about in blue uh for draft and for sealed i'm gonna say this card is definitely a three for us i do like this card quite a bit in draft and in sealed if you're in azurius tempo um or if you kind of want to splash into white if you're in simic for draft and for sealed and again for standard for me feels like this is going to be maybe at a three or a two um excuse me draft for two and then uh, standard for three sorry about that <laughs> But yes, yeah, absorbed to me, very, very good across the board for me. Um, I like it quite a bit. Um, I don't think it will see much play though in standard. There are just a ton of other really good counter control right now. So this might be a good sideboard card or maybe just a good counter against the more aggro decks in the format. Either way, absorb is here for us and let's be right along. Aeromunculus is a three mana, two, three homunculus mutant flying and adapt for four or adapt one for four mana. There we go, have it backwards there. <laughs> Aeromunculus for us is going to be a two in draft and sealed. I think I think this card is quite powerful in draft and sealed especially if you're in the simic archetype um, or if you want to splash into this card if you're in azurius great flyer turns into a four a three four very very good as well being a common two, you're going to run into this quite often. So I think this card is pretty much all around great for us. As far as this card seeing play in standard, uh, it's not. It's not going to see play. It's a little too expensive, and the adapt is a little too expensive as well. Next, of course, we have Applied Biomancy, a two mana instant. Uh, choose one or both. A target creature you gets plus one, plus one into end of turn, and return target creature to its owner's hand. This is very good because it's, it's upping your board state, and again, bouncing a card off of your opponent's board state. I really like this as a three, or maybe even a two for draft and for seal for Simic. Very very powerful. However, the uh, requirements to cast this spell are quite high, so you do want to keep that in mind going forward for this particular card, um, because I do think, again, the green-blue means you kind of want to get this off early, but because of the way it's it's kind of uh, uh, put down as far as the mana goes, um, it will be probably more mid to late game there for you, and it's fine that way too. Uh, for draft or for draft seal, it's going to be a three. Uh, for biomancy, it's going to be probably a five. For standard, um, I think that's probably where it's going to sit uh, most likely for that particular format. Next up for us, we have Azurius Knight Arbiter. This is a five mana, two five human knight, Vigilance, and then the Knight Arbiter can't be blocked. This is very interesting because it's a five mana, two five with Vigilance that can't be blocked. So it's able to do lots of damage turn over turn. Uh, very nice. It's also got a five toughness, so it can block a lot of stuff as well. So very nice for us as well too. And of course the art in this is very nice. I keep saying very nice. I don't know why, am I Borat? What's happening here? <laughs> this is gonna be a three for us uh, in uh, draft and for sealed. Um, I like it quite a bit in that particular format. As far as standard goes, this is unplayable. This is not very useful, uh, too expensive. And of course, it doesn't really do enough for us. Uh, Azurius Skyguard here is our bomb for Azurius, a six mana, three, three flying first strike creatures your opponent control get negative one, negative zero. Um, so very good against the afterlife decks, the Orzhov decks, especially um, Skyguard for us is going to be sitting probably at the one slot for us uh, for uh, draft and for sealed. I really like it for that particular format. I do think that uh, for us, especially that flying first strike is one of the few kind of mechanics that is just a straight up bomb in those particular formats, especially draft and sealed. Uh, this thing play in standard probably won't. It's going to be a five for us there. Um, just too expensive. And of course, we have stuff like Light Reliver, Dawnbringer, and all that kind of stuff in the format. This just can't hold a candle to those cards, sadly. But of course, that's why cards like this exist for draft and for limited. Next to force we have is Basila Bell Haunt. This is a four mana, three, four spirits. This is definitely Orzov. Whenever it enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card and you gain three life. Uh, the Haunt for me is probably a three. I wish it had Vigilance. I wish it had Flying. I wish it had Lifelink. Something on top of this ability uh, rather than just being kind of a one trick pony for four mana. Uh, four mana, three, four with such a ex extreme like mana constraint. Not that useful to us. It is decent at being able to, again, discard a, card, opponent, a card from your opponent's hand as well as gaining three life but 
again, we need Vigilance, we need Lifelink, we need something else on top of this to make it worth it after it's the battlefield. That four mana is really, really expensive for us, which means it's gonna be a five for us in standard, so just not that useful overall in that particular format. Next up here, we have Bedevil, a three mana instant. Destroy target artifact, creature, or planeswalker. Uh, Bedevil's gonna be a one in every format. <laughs> Very useful in Rakdos for us in Draft and Sealed. Very useful for Rakdos and Grixis for us in standard. I think this is gonna be probably one of the better removal spells right now, especially because again, it's an instant speed removal spell for a Planeswalker and it's three mana. So gonna be one of those few cards where it's really, really efficient for us in draft sealed and standard. Very good card all around, fantastic rare, and probably gonna be a high draft pick for you even a first pickable card, of course, in your format. Next up for us, we have Biomancer's Familiar. This is a two mana, two, two mutant. Activated abilities of creatures you control cost two colorless less to activate. This effect can't reduce the amount of mana and ability cost to activate to less than one. And you can tap it next time the target creature adapts this turn. It adapts as though it had no plus one, plus one counters on it. This is very good because it's giving your creatures the ability to adapt multiple times if you have the mana to do so, or if this creature survives long enough. Very interesting. Um, I feel like the familiar to me is gonna be probably somewhere in the two slot for us for a draft and for sealed. Not that excited for this to see standard play, maybe a little slow. Um, it, because it is just a two mana two two and the mana constraint is a little like restrictive here uh, But I do like it a lot I think it's gonna be brewed around with a lot in standard So I'm gonna put it at the two slot as well for standard I think it's one of those cards that it's just it, it needs a lot of brewing around to make it work But again, there's so many adapt triggers that become so much less expensive Thanks to familiar here And so that's what makes me think that it's gonna be more of a standard card than it will be a draft and sealed card uh, Versus like just seeing play straight up uh, but again familiar very very powerful if you do get into Simic and you do have the full package for Simic for draft and for sealed. Next up for us we have is Bolrak Clan Crusher. Uh, this is a five mana four for Ogre Warrior. That alone is pretty decent, but you can tap and remove a plus one plus one counter from a creature you control and the Crusher deals two damage to any target. Now any target here is very good for us. Um, and of course I'm gonna put this at the two slot for draft and for sealed. I think this is quite good in draft and sealed, especially because Riot gives plus one plus one counters as well as Simic gives plus one plus one counters. So if you splash red in Simic or you splash blue in Gruul, I think this is a card that can be a fantastic top end bomb for you uh, in those particular deck lists. Again, gaining, uh, being able to do two damage to something, which is any target, including your opponent's face, very powerful. And just being a 4 4 on the onset, if, even if you don't get to use the tap ability, a 5 minute 4 4 is perfectly reasonable. And I think this is a great top end bomb for you for those particular archetypes. As far as the seeing play in standard, uh, maybe a 4, probably a 5, though, probably more unplayable than I think. Uh, but maybe it's a 4 here because you can, again, tap this and deal two damage to any target. You got to respect that. Uh, so giving it a 4 here for standard. Next up for us, we have is Captive Audience. This is a seven mana enchantment mythic. Uh, Captive Audience enters a battlefield under the control of an opponent of your choice. This means it could be used in Commander. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, choose one that hasn't been chosen. And these are, of course, for your opponent to choose. Your life total becomes four, discard your hand, and each opponent creates five 2 2 black zombie creature tokens. This card is hilarious because if you can get it off and draft and sealed, it just wins you the game, basically. Um, really fun. Um, I don't really think this card is going to see much standard play, but it will see a lot of commander play, and that's kind of where this card feels at home. Uh, for me, Captive Audience, <laughs> if you get this in draft and sealed and you get to play it, it's definitely a one. It's going to win you the game, uh, absolutely. Uh, as far as this card seeing play in standard, it might see play in some weird like crazy list like maybe a jund list somewhere um but besides that i want to give it probably a three uh, just for that jund list kind of respect <laughs> for that ramp um, besides that it's not going to see any kind of play anywhere else just respecting you for that jund list uh, for the ramp there but besides that probably a five for us in standard moving up here we have a cinder vines a two mana enchantment rare whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell cinder vines deals one damage to that player you can pay one colorless sacrifice cinder vines destroy target artifact or enchantment cinder vines deals two damage to that permanence controller. Very interesting here. Um, of course, it's very good to be able to kind of damage a control player or a more heavy kind of spell oriented player. Cinder Vines for me in Draft and Sealed, probably a two. Um, it is kind of specific with what it's doing here. It's very wide in that it can do a lot of good things for us for best of one in standard. Uh, but I do think for like for limited draft and sealed, that kind of stuff, it's just gonna be a two here. Uh, for us in 
Uh, standard here, probably gonna be a two as well. I do think it is probably one of the better kind of like all-arounder cards for best of one, as it can kind of uh, hurt a control player and then hurt a control player that plays artifacts or enchantments, which is nice. And especially in Draft and Sealed where you have lockets and stuff like that, this could be a good kind of counter to that as well. Next up for us here is Clan Guild Mage. This is a two mana two two human shaman. You can pay two, target creature can't block this turn, or you can pay three and target land you control becomes a four four elemental creature with haste until end of turn. It's still a land. Um, I like both of these abilities. I think Clan Guild Mage is quite good here. So I'm gonna put it at the three slot for us. A two mana two two, really nothing to sneeze at. It's not amazing, um, not great, but it's not terrible. And that's kind of where the abilities kind of come in here on top of this card. So that's what makes it a lot better. As far as this card seeing play in standard, probably not going to. I think the abilities are a little too expensive for what they're trying to go for. And of course, they are tap abilities as well, as well so it's a little slower too. Um, but I think we'll see quite a bit of play in draft and in sealed. Next up for us here is Combined Guild Mage. This is the uh, Simic Guild Mage, a two mana two to Merfolk Wizard. You can pay two, tap it. This turn, each creature you control enters a battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. So I misread this during previous season. I thought it was like saying, you know, if it comes in with a counter, it comes in with another counter. No, it just comes in with a counter if you play this uh, and then tap it and then cast a creature. So I think that's interesting. I think it's way better than I initially thought it was going to be, especially during previous season. So I want to correct that there. Uh, you can pay two here and remove a plus one plus one counter from target creature you control onto another target creature you control that's very interesting and again can kind of come into play uh, with like the biomancers uh, in bloom so for me for draft from, draft from for sealed I think the combined guild mage is probably gonna be a three maybe even a two thanks to that plus one plus one counter kind of going on top and being able to move them very interesting of course you have to dump mana into that uh, for me I think the guild mage again is probably gonna see a lot of play in standard as well since it is a merfolk wizard so it's got two keywords in, a, in two different archetypes right now in standard. So could be into a Simic Merfolk list, could be into a Simic uh, or some other kind of color combination for wizard list. So I think this is one of those rare cards where it can do so many things and be very interesting in different types of archetypes here. Moving up here, we have Cult Guild Mage. This is a two mana two two human shaman. You can pay four and tap it. Target player it discards a card. Activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. You can also pay one red and tap it. Cult Guild Mage deals one damage to target opponent or planeswalker. So again, with the guild mage, it's fine. It's gonna be okay, especially in Rakdos for us. Um, so this is gonna be a three for us in draft and for sealed. As far as this card seeing play in standard, it's not going to. Again, same reason as the uh, the Gruul guild mage. It just kind of has a lot of mana to dump into it uh, for us to get those kind of abilities. And I think it's gonna be one of those cards where you're not gonna get into it that much in draft and sealed anyway, because it's very, very specific uh, for what it's kind of trying to do here. Um, now target player discards a card is nice, but it is four mana, so getting that off multiple times, kind of hard to do uh, in drafted and sealed if you're trying to kind of move forward in the match. Now, if you're out of cards in your hand, then you can definitely get this off multiple times, but your opponent may have a removal spell for this card ready and wait. Moving on here, we have his Deputy of Detention. This is a three mana, one three rare Vidalcan Wizard. Whenever the detention enters a battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls and all other non-land permanents that player controls with the same name as that permanent until Deputy of Detention leaves the battlefield. This is a very interesting card. Basically, as was it? Sphere Detention, uh, or Detention Sphere from uh, the past Ravnica sets. Very nice. On a creature, it's fine. Uh, three Toughness is kind of scary for us because it can die to a lot of things in Standard. Um, but Deputy of Detention for me, for Draft and for Sealed, it's a solid two, maybe even a one. Uh, because again, if the opponent doesn't have removal for this card, they just this card just takes your creature and we get a creature. So I think it's very good. Um, the multiple creatures kind of like naming convention on this card won't really come into play that much in Draft and Sealed. It will come into play a little bit more in Standard, uh, but not as much as you'd think. Deputy Detention, though, for us um, will probably be a two as well in Standard. Now, if, per if someone is using the uh, Persistent Petitioners and they have like seven of them on the battlefield, Deputy of Detention can grab all those or Rat Colony. That'd be hilarious as well. Um, so kind of look into that for maybe best of one play. Uh, but Deputy Detention, quite good across the board. And I think it's going to see a ton of uh, draft and sealed play. Probably some light standard play as well. Moving up here, we have Domri Chaos Bringer. This is our first Planeswalker. Four mana, five loyalty, legendary Planeswalker Domri. Uh, you can plus one, add red or green. If uh, that mana was spent on a creature, it gains Riot, which is very nice. Uh, plus our negative three here, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal up to two creature cards, that's two of them, from among them and put them into your hand, put the rest at the bottom of your library in a random order. And negative eight, you get an emblem with at the beginning of each end step, create a four, four red and green beast creature token with trample. So 
Domri, probably, for my opinion, the best Planeswalker for standard from this particular set. We'll get into the other ones in just a minute, but I really like Domri as a standard card. I really like Domri as a great card for us for our draft and for sealed. I am gonna give it in the two slot instead of a one slot though, because I do think that <clears throat> one, the plus one has to be used, like it doesn't have to be used, but it has to be used on a creature for it to get right, which is interesting. But if you don't have a creature, then it's, you're, you're just plus one and doing nothing. So it has no immediate board impact. The negative three, again, has no immediate board impact, uh, which means that you could just negative three, get two creatures and then Domri dies. So in that way, it could just be a negative, uh, a, a, a four mana kind of hunt for two creatures, which is probably fine. Uh, but again, in draft and sealed, you kind of want these the planeswalkers to be a little bit more impactful. Um, negative eight for us. Um, it's honestly kind of bad uh, for standard. I think this, the negative eight for draft and for sealed is really fun. Uh, but again, if your opponent can outpace you or if they have flyers, then they just went outright. And that's not great for us. So Domri is a two for us in draft and for sealed. So let's look at the point for standard. It's going to be a three for us here. Uh, again, kind of similar reasons. It doesn't really protect itself. It kind of digs, but it you know goes down to, to two, which is a shock range. And then the uh, emblem just doesn't win the game immediately. And you kind of want that emblem to be really powerful. And Domri just doesn't have the emblem that can really do that. It makes a four for every instep. And uh, if an opponent can just outpace you, they just win. And that's kind of not great. Moving up here for us, we have Dovin Grand Arbiter. This is the other kind of planeswalker for us. This is a three mana, three loyalty legendary planeswalker Dovin. Plus one until end of turn. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put a loyalty counter on Dovin Grand Arbiter. Negative one here is create a 1-1 uh, one, one colorless thopter artifact token with flying. You gain one life and negative seven look at the top seven card or top ten cards not seven top ten cards of your library put three of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order dovin kind of has a similar place for me in draft and for sealed i think it's actually three so not even as good as domri here um one the plus one here for us it needs creatures on the battlefield to kind of do anything uh to get more loyalty counters i'm not really that like excited for the plus one honestly it really does nothing other than just make itself larger which is fine i guess a uh, negative one create a thopter that's fine as well and you know it, again it just doesn't do a lot for us and negative seven we can hunt for several cards and put them into our hand which is great uh, especially in draft and sealed where your deck list is a lot smaller so that uh, loyalty or negative seven is really really powerful however getting dovin up there um, is going to be really challenging unless you have a lot of flyers in your deck list so azurius you might that's why this is at a three for us uh this card seeing play in standard probably going to be at the three slot as well again the applications are very narrow blue white uh kind of aggro or blue white tempo could see this card and uh you know getting in for like a lot of white uh, flying white fl uh, flyers there we go a lot of low level light white flyers there we go how's that <laughs> <laughs> I keep saying light. I don't know what's happening. Um, so Dovin, yeah, going to see play probably in that particular archetype. Um, not so sure this could see any kind of play in like a, like a control list or anything. Dovin normally is going to see home, like uh, have a home in a control list deck. And because the plus one is so specific, not so sure if it's going to even do that. It's also coming in with three loyalty counters, which means it's, it's just going to get shot out of the sky like immediately. And that's not really great for us either. Um, so let's move right along. Dovin's Acuity. This is a three mana enchantment. When Dovin's Acuity enters a battlefield, you gain two life and draw a card. Whenever you cast an instant spell during your main phase, you may return Dovin's Acuity to its owner's hand. This card is interesting because it's kind kind of trying to emulate the Demir card, which is the enchantment where your opponent discards a card, you draw a card. Um, Dovin's Acuity, not as good because your opponent isn't discarding a card. You're just gaining two life and life isn't that important to us in the grand scheme of things in magic. So I mean, three mana draw card is fine, I guess, uh, to be able to be re to be able to repeat this over and over again. That's perfectly reasonable. Um, so, Dovin's Acuity for me probably gonna be a three for us in draft and for sealed. And of course, for standard, probably gonna be a five. Really not playable at all in that format. I wish it was because uh, this information campaign is quite good in standard. Uh, but Acuity probably not gonna be anywhere near as good as uh, this information campaign. Moving up here for us is Emergency Powers, a seven mana instant. Each player shovels their hand and graveyard into their library, then draws seven cards, exile Emergency Powers. You have Addendum here, which means if you cast this on your main phase, you may put a permanent card with converted mana cost seven or less from your hand onto the battlefield. So, talked about this during previous season. This is a very powerful card for Commander. Could be a powerful card, maybe, in standard. And uh, this card is really kind of hilarious in Draft and for Sealed. Uh, for me, though, it's probably going to be a three for us in Draft and for Sealed, and probably going to be maybe a four for us uh, in Standard. 
Reason being, I'm kind of like listing this a little bit higher, is each player, which means your opponent as well, uh, gets to shuffle their hand and draw seven cards. Giving your opponent card advantage is very bad and something you never want to do, especially in standard, but probably not as much as in, in Draft and Sealed, but still quite powerful in Draft and Sealed as well, because again, unless you deck your opponent with this particular type of card, uh, they just you know have a full fist of cards to go against you, especially if you cast this on your main phase and you get out you know one maybe, maybe one threat, one bomb, and they drew seven cards, and one of those seven is probably going to be a, a removal spell, and then you know you just lose your creature, and then they have a fistful of cards. So I don't really like this card a lot uh, in that particular format, and I like it even less in Standard. So just not a big fan of this card. It's going to be fun for probably commander and that's about it moving up here we have ethereal absolution this is a six mana enchantment rare creatures you control get plus one plus one creatures your opponents control get negative one negative one you can pay for exile target card from an opponent's graveyard if that was a creature card you create a one one white and black spirit creature token with flying ethereal absolution is amazing basically just turns off afterlife on your opponent's side of the field and makes your afterlife creatures a lot larger since it is just creatures and not non-token or token um, that's very interesting for us. So I think this is going to be a two for us in Draft and for Sealed. And for uh, Standard, it's probably going to be a three as well. It is six mana, so it is kind of expensive to get on the battlefield. But, I mean, look at the ability you're getting with this card. This card is amazing. Uh, being able to pump your board state and weaken your opponent's board state. And if your opponent has a lot of one ones like the Mono White list or the Boros list, then they're just dead. <laughs> and that's amazing. Um, so... And for all those creatures that died, you get to start making 1-1 one, one flyers, or that turn into 2-2 two, two flyers thanks to this own enchantment. So I like this card a lot for Draft and Sealed. can basically win the game for you. Uh, and in, in Standard, it's not going to win the game for you, but it's quite powerful as well. Moving up here for us is Final Payment, a 2-mana instant. As an additional ca cost to cast this spell, pay 5 life or sacrifice a creature or enchantment destroy target creature this is very good uh, being able to pay five life again life totals in magic really not as like you know important as someone would might assume so final payment to me is just a two mana removal spell <laughs> two mana destroy target creature uh, with like basically no downside which is kind of amazing um really love final payment They're really powerful in an orzov list as well so gonna be a one for me in draft and for sealed and it's gonna see a ton of standard play as well since we have the again the afterlife kind of coming into standard too so for me final payment is gonna be probably a two in that format too um, i've already kind of built a, a route around a list uh, for a complete four of for a, a deck list for final payment and i think this card is very good for that particular format moving up here is fireblade artist this is a two mana creature human shaman uncommon it's a two two has haste at the beginning of your upkeep you may sacrifice a creature when you do the artist deals two damage to target opponent or planeswalker now, one thing is about this card, I really wish it was able to do a point of damage to any target because it would make this card kind of over the edge amazing. Um, since it doesn't, it's just perfectly fine. Um, being able to ping your opponent for two is okay. As long as you have stuff on the battlefield that has afterlife or you can, you know, just sack something without any consequence, that's also true. Uh, but a two mana two two with haste is perfectly fine as well. So for me, Fireblade add up is going to be kind of sitting around the three slot for us for draft and for sealed. And for standards, it's going to be sitting around the four slot for us. So really not exciting for either format but it is decent it is kind of average and i think you'll see some play in draft and sealed especially moving up here we have is frenzied arnox this is a four mana three three cat beast cat beast it's got riot trample and you can pay six and give it plus three plus zero onto end of turn Wow, Frenzy Darnox is quite good here. Um, so gonna give this a two in uh, drafting for sealed. Um, as far as this card seeing play in standard, it's not going to, it's a little too expensive, but it is quite powerful in draft and sealed. This is definitely a huge bomb you can get into at the common slot for Gruul. Four mana three three with Riot is a four mana three three with haste or a four mana four four with hay, with a trample. Uh, it could be haste trample as well. So very, very good either way, um, but giving it that on top like pump ability, the fire breathing ability is just insane. Meaning this is going to be a huge threat for your board states. Uh, turn over turn and your opponent will want to block this and of course want to try and remove it as quickly as possible next up here for us is frilled mystic this is a four mana three two elf lizard wizard why not just call it merfolk i mean look at the art look at the art it's a merfolk <laughs> it's got flash when there's a battlefield you may counter target spell um, this is awesome. This is basically Mystic Snake. Um, really like this card a lot. I think it's probably going to be around the two slot for us for draft and for sealed. I sincerely or wish this was, uh, you know, a merfolk for us for standard. It is an elf, so it can see play in maybe a Simic elf list somewhere, I guess. Uh, but for me, it's going to be probably in the three slot for us for draft and, or for standard as well. Um, but I really wish this was a merfolk. It just feels like a merfolk. It looks like a merfolk. It acts like a merfolk. It's, it's a merfolk. Come on. 
<laughs> Sadly, it's not though. Uh, but very good card for both formats. Again, this is kind of fantastic for us for, for Draft and for Seal being able to have a creature and a counter all in, wrapped up into one particular card. Moving up for us is Galloping Lizrog. This is a five and a three, three frog lizard trample. Whenever it enters a battlefield, you may remove any number of plus one plus one counters from among creatures you control. If you do, put that many plus one plus one counters on Galloping Lizrog. So very interesting. Basically moves all of the plus one plus one counters onto one creature, doubles them, and makes it a huge threat. Uh, it also has trample as well, so gotta keep that in mind too. So this being like a nine nine or a 10 10 or whatever, it's a huge creature uh, being able to hit the battlefield and be a huge threat to your opponent's board state. So this is gonna be a one for me and draft and seal. This is a giant bomb. Uh, as an uncommon, so love this card a lot for that particular format. I think this card might see some play in standard, so I'm gonna get it, give it a three here. I do think there are some simming players out there that definitely wanna see this card see a lot of play uh, in standard. I'm not really sure, sure if it's going to, uh, but it is a lot of fun, and uh, I definitely wanna see if they can try and make it work. The next up for us here is Get to the Point, a five mana instant destroy target creature, scry one, simple, straight, uh, you know, straight to the answers there. It's uh, very, you know, easy to kind of grasp, and uh, you know, Amazing. Uh, I love this card. I think it's gonna be good for, again, draft and sealed. Not gonna see any kind of standard play. So it's gonna be a three for me in draft and sealed and gonna be a five for me in standard. So simple, straightforward, and amazing. Moving on, we have a Grasping Thrall, a five minute three, three Thrall Flyer. Whenever it enters a battlefield, it deals two damage to each opponent and you gain two life. Um, this is your bomb for you in uh, Orzov here. Um, being able to have a two point life swing is very good, especially in the mid to late game. And having a three, three Flyer for five isn't bad either. Um, I do think this is gonna be probably a two for us in draft and for sealed. And of course, it's not gonna see play in standard. It's gonna be a five. So more cards in this particular format that's not gonna see standard play versus cards that are, but again, Grasping Thrall, very good in Draft and Sealed. Moving up here is Growth Spiral. This card will see play in Standard. A two mana instant, draw a card, and maybe put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. This card is very good. I'm gonna give it probably a two here uh, for Draft and for Sealed. I think it might even be a one. Being able to draw a card and just lay a land from your hand, even if you have a land in your hand, it doesn't have to be like the draw, the card you draw has to be a land. It's just a land in your hand. Um, very good, and it comes on the battlefield untapped if it is just a regular land. Um, at instant speed, this card is amazing, very powerful for Simic, and it will definitely be a huge card for you to ramp uh, in standard as well. So gonna be a two for us in draft and for sealed, probably gonna be a two for us as well in standard too. Moving up your force is Gruel Spellbreaker. This card is amazing. A Gruel card, three mana, three, three, Ogre Warrior with Riot Trample, and as long as it's your turn, you and Gruel Spellbreaker have Hexproof. So. This basically means if your opponent has some form of like settle the wreckage or something like that while you're attacking in, they can't use it. They have to wait till their turn to do something else like a cleansing Nova or something. So this is gonna be a one across the board for draft sealed and standard. It's gonna be a three, three with haste trample, or it's gonna be a, a four, four with trample. Um, and then of course it has hexproof on your turn and you have hexproof. So very good card all around for three mana. This card is bustedly good. Uh, and of course he's busting something on, the, on his uh, art. So, you know, you know he's good. <laughs> this is a gyre engineer, a three mana one one Vidalcan wizard. You can tap it and add two colors to your mana pool. This card is probably okay. Um, so gonna give this like probably a two for us in draft and for seal. This is gonna help you kind of go off on your adapt triggers a little bit faster than normal. Um, so great three drop slot for you for that particular format. For standard, probably gonna be a three or four. There are tons of uh, kind of tappers in the format and I think the engineer is not gonna see that much play in uh, standard, but it is gonna see a lot of play in draft and sealed. Moving up here is Hackrobat, a three mana, two, three human robe. Spectacle cost for two. You can pay black and it gets death touch into an turn. You can pay red and it gets plus two, negative two into an turn. So if it comes in and it's unblocked, you just give it the uh, plus two, negative two and get in for four instead of two. Very sneaky on the design here, and it can be coming in as a two mana uh, creature instead of a three mana creature as well. So again, very nice, very straightforward. I like it a lot. Give me a three for us in uh, draft and for sealed and for standard. It's going to be a five. Not going to see much play, I don't believe, um, but it is quite powerful in draft and sealed. Moving up here is high alert. This is a three mana enchantment. Each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power and creatures you control can attack as though they didn't have Defender. You can also pay for an untapped target creature. Now this is the, the card that kind of makes the Arcades deck kind of go off uh, as well, because it's basically Arcades again, <laughs> which is quite good for three mana. Um, it is interesting that it is Azurius, so kind of keep that in mind, um, but I do like it quite a bit uh, in the uh, like standard environment, not as much in Draft and for Sealed. So for me, it's gonna be a four in Draft and Sealed, and it's actually gonna be a three for me, moving up a little bit in standard, thanks to the Arcades kind of deck shell. Moving up here is Hydroid uh, uh, Krasis, I think that's how you pronounce that, a 
X and two, uh, two mana, zero, zero, Jellyfish Hydra Beast. Lots of things going on in this card. Whenever you cast this spell, you gain half X life and draw half X cards round down each time. Flying Trample and Hydroid Crisis enters a battlefield with X plus one, plus one counters on it. Very interesting here. I really like the Crisis overall. Um, I do think it's going to be probably a two for us in draft and for sealed and a three for us in standard. I do think it's going to see play in both formats, especially because you're drawing cards and gaining life uh, with getting a flying trample creature. So if you're able to dump a lot of mana into this, you're able to draw a lot of cards, get a lot of life and have a large flying trample creature. So very good card all around, doing a lot of good things. Very powerful. Um, huge bomb for you, definitely in, in draft and sealed. Moving up here for us is Imperious Oligarch, a two mana two um, human cleric with vigilance afterlife for one very simple and straightforward uh oligarch to me is probably going to be a two for us in draft and sealed it's going to trade with something die and you get a one one flyer and for standard probably a three maybe even a four not as aggressive as you wanted it to be for the afterlife trigger um i wish it had something else on top of this maybe lifelink would, would make it kind of a little bit better but it is a common so you kind of want to see that um, but i do think this card is quite fun in draft and sealed moving up here is judith the scourge diva a three mana two two human shaman other creatures you control get plus one plus zero whenever a non-token creature you control dies judith the scourge diva deals one damage to any target very powerful card very like across the board amazing uh, gonna be a two maybe even a one for us in draft and for seal and for standard gonna be a three um the rakdos lists that take advantage of this card in standard are just scary um cannot wait to kind of see this see more play in standard and brewing so this card is amazing. You need to look out for it, especially in standard. And I think this card's quite good again in drafting for seal. Moving up here is Kaya or Zavu Serpent. This is the other Planeswalker, a three mana, three loyalty legendary Planeswalker Kaya. Plus one, exile up to two target cards from a single graveyard. You gain two life for, for at least, if at least, not for at least, if at least one creature card was exiled this way. And negative one, exile target non land permanent with converted mana cost one or less. Negative five, Kaya or Zavu Serpent deals damage to target player equal to the total number of cards that player owns an exile and you gain life uh, and you gain that much life so interesting card here however just like with Dovin here it's just not that impactful to the board state you have no protection for the card um, it exiles a converted mana cost one or less which is like nothing really useful <laughs> like at all um, this feels more like a card that was built for modern and not a card that was built for standard so it's gonna be a four for us for draft and for sealed and for standard I feel like this is probably maybe a three I've got I gotta respect it because it is a planeswalker but at the same time, it just feels bad, guys. Like, I don't like this card at all. It just seems really terrible uh, in standard draft and sealed. So this is definitely a C, a C play in modern as far as like a cool cyborg tech card against maybe Dredge or something like that. But again, just just kind of blah, just kind of bleh. not great. Moving up here for us, we do have a great card, though. This is Kaya's Wrath. This is a four mana sorcery. Destroy all creatures. You gain life equal to the number of creatures you, you controlled that were destroyed this way. Love this card. Think it's very powerful. Um, Kaya's Wrath is going to be a one for us across the board for draft sealed and standard. Um, it's a four mana like board wipe. We haven't had one of those in a while, and it's very, very good, especially in this particular format. So very good card across the board. Next up for us is Knight of the Last Breath, a seven mana four four Gaia Knight. You can pay three colorless, sacrifice another non-token creature, create a one one white and black spirit creature token with the flying. It also has afterlife for three. This card is no slouch. It is seven mana though, so it better be no slouch. Uh, for me, it's going to be probably in three slot uh, for draft and for sealed. I think it's one of those few cards where it's got a lot going on for it, but at the same time, it's also really expensive and a card you probably won't be seeing a lot of play with. Um, next up for us, as far as standard goes, um, this is going to be seeing probably play in uh, a five slot for a standard. So not going to see play there at all because it's seven mana again. Moving up here for us is Lavinia Azorius Renegade. This is a two mana, two, two legendary creature, human soldier. Each opponent can't cast non-creature spells with converted mana cost equal to or greater than the number of lands that player controls. And whenever an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. This is a very interesting card and might see play in like modern. Um, not so sure it's going to see much play in standard. This could kind of be a card that shuts down cards like Electro Dominance and things like that. So interesting ability here, maybe a cyborg tech card for standard. Uh, it's just a two mana two two though. So not really going to see play for us anywhere else really. So I'm going to kind of give this probably a three just to respect the ability here for us for, for uh, drafted for sealed. Um, but this card feels more like 
he uh, well actually I put this at the at the five slot for draft and sealed like saying this card is not good and a three slot for standard there we go um, so five for draft and sealed this card is a card you probably just want to like pass straight up um, but for draft for for standard it's going to be probably a three because of cards like electro dominance being a more prominence uh, in that particular format so this feels again kind of like Kaya more of a card for modern and less of a card for other formats moving on here is law mages binding this is a three mana enchantment aura flash enchant creature enchanted creature can't attack or block and it's activated abilities can't be activated so this is a great lockdown card for you i'm um, gonna be a two for us in uh draft and for sealed and gonna be a five for us in standard just one of those cards where it does a lot of good stuff for us for draft and sealed but we have much better removal in standard and that's why it's ranking a little bit lower for us moving up here for us is macabre mockery this is a four mana instant put target creature card from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control it gets plus two plus zero and gains haste onto end of turn sacrifice it at the beginning of the next instep so very nice. Really like this card a lot. Going to be a great card for you for draft and for sealed. Going to be a two for that particular format. And for standard, going to be a five. Not going to see play there. A little too expensive, but it is really fun at being able to kind of grab your opponent's uh, creature from the graveyard and then give it haste and then, you know, sack it. That's very nice. Moving right along here is Mortify. This is a card for Orzov, a three mana instant destroy target creature or enchantment. Simple, straightforward, and it goes for the, to the two drop slot for us for draft and for sealed. A great removal spell for us. Just simple, straightforward. Um, probably won't see as much standard play. We have a lot of other cards in the format that do a lot of great things. Um, so I think Mortify will be just a great card for draft and sealed. And of course, we'll see light standard play, but not as much as you'd think. Moving up here is Nikia of the Old Ways, a five mana five five legendary creature centaur druid. You can't cast non-creature spells. Whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana of any type that land produces. So very interesting, kind of helping you kind of ramp a little bit, as well as uh, kind of locking down your strategy, being able to be just creature based. Um, so for me, this feels like a two for draft and sealed. It's a five mana five five that, you know, again, doubles your mana essentially. Um, so if you're getting to a heavy kind of creature based deck, um, this is very good. If you're not, this card could probably damage you a little bit. Um, but your opponent will probably want to remove it either way because it is a 5-5. Five five. Uh, for standard, this card feels more like a 3 for me out of the uh, the uh, point system here. Um, a little bit average, but I think it's going to be very, very good in a gruel list somewhere. Uh, because, again, there are a ton of really good gruel cards in the format and in standard just in general. Um, so good cards for that. Next up is Pitiless Pontiff, a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two Vampire Cleric. You can pay one, sacrifice another creature, and Pitiless Pontiff gains Death Touch and Indestructible into an turn. I wish this was free. It's so close to being free. Why can't it be free? <laughs> for Draft and Sealed, it's a two. It's perfectly reasonable. It's quite good, actually. Uh, for Standard, this is a three. Um, both of these are going to be used for us for, to kind of get off the, t the death triggers for Tessa uh, in the format, uh, and also just the Afterlife triggers in general. Um, kind of wish this card had Afterlife as well, like Afterlife for one would have been really fun. Um, but it's doing okay stuff, um, so I think it's going to be fine for those particular formats. Moving right along is an amazing card here. This is Prime Speaker Vanifar, a 4-mana 2-4 legendary creature, Elf Ooze Wizard. You can tap at Sacrifice in the creature, search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to 1, plus the Sacrifice creature's converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Activates its ability only any time you can cast a sorcery. So... A fixed birthing pod on a creature. Very nice, very straightforward, and uh, very good. This is going to be probably a one for us in draft and in sealed. I like this card a ton in that particular format, kind of helping you kind of get out better cards over and over again from your deck list. For standard, this card feels very good. Again, going to be a two for us. For standard, I think this card is, again, one of those cards where it's just going to be a huge combo kind of enabler for your deck list. So I'm going to see a lot of play in that particular format as well. I think this card is very good all around. Next up for us is Rafter Demon, a four mana 4-2 demon. Spectacle cost for five, which actually is higher than the original cost. Whenever you're in a battlefield, if its spectacle cost was paid, each opponent discards a card. This card is just not great. I'm not a big fan of this card, honestly. Um, so demon for me gonna be a three and draft and sealed it's fine it's a four mana four two and it could be a five mana four two to discard a card but that's really not great in the format uh for standard this is a five here it's gonna be a uh, unplayable card just not great at all um so moving right along we have a uh, rakdos fire wheeler a four mana four three human rogue whenever it enters the battlefield it deals two damage to target opponent and two damage to up to one target creature or Planeswalker. So I really like this card a lot. I think this card is quite good. Going to be a three for us in uh, drafting for sealed and probably not going to see any kind of play in standard. But it is very, very good in draft and sealed. I do want to kind of, you know, make sure I say that again. Um, 
two damage to an opponent, two damage to a creature, and it's a 4-3. So it might be able to shock down a, a creature, shock your opponent, and then again, have a 4-3 to trade with something else on the battlefield. So quite good for Rakdos. Moving on is Rakdos Roostabout. This is a three mana, three, two ogre warrior. Whenever it becomes blocked, it deals one damage to the target player Planeswalker is attacking. I do think for draft and for seal, this is probably a three, um, quite good. A three mana, three, two is fine. Uh, and a three mana, three, two that actually pings your opponent for one is perfectly fine as well. Because again, in the format where we have a lot of spectacle costs, uh, Roostabout enables that for us just by attacking out and getting blocked. So if it does trade with something, it does still get that uh, spectacle cost ping uh, up for us. So we can cast something that turn. Uh, for our spectacle cost. For standard, this feels a little too uh, slow for us, so probably gonna get the five slot. Not gonna see any kind of play. A little too slow for that format. Moving up here is Rakdos the Showstopper, a six mana, six, six demon. Flying Trample, when it enters a battlefield, flip a coin for each creature that isn't a demon, devil, or imp. Destroy each creature whose coin flip comes up tails. I really like this card for draft and for sealed. Um, even if you don't win the coin flips, it's still a six mana, six, six flying trampler, so it's a huge threat on the board state, so. Very good card in that particular format. Um, I really like this card as well, and standard gonna be a, probably a two for that uh, format as well. I do like it a lot in the Rakdos lists. I do like it a lot as a Grixis finisher for you in control. So just a great card overall for that. And it could also just be a straight up board wipe if your you know flips are correct. Moving on here, we have is Ravager Worm, a seven mana, four, five worm with Riot. Whenever it enters the battlefield, choose up to one. Uh, Ravager Worm fights target creature you don't control and destroy target land with an activated ability that isn't a mana ability. Uh, Ravager Worm to me is amazing, uh, especially in Gruel where you're going to have a lot of ways to kind of ramp into Ravager Worm. Um, so paying seven mana for this is perfectly reasonable. Uh, for standard, I feel like Ravager Worm is probably a two. Again, really up there in price as far as expense. Uh, very hard to kind of get off there. But again, at the same time, we have Land of War Elves. We have Druid the Cow. We have lots of ways to, to tap for mana in the format. And Ravager Worm helps us kind of do that. So very powerful overall. I think this card is going to be a huge threat and a huge bomb for you in Gruel. Um, and will most likely win you the game, either being a 4-5 with haste that destroys something with a fight mechanic, or a 5-6 with haste, or a 5-6 that destroys something with a fight mechanic. So, very good card overall. Moving up here is Rhythm of the Wild. This is a 3-man enchantment. Creatures you, creature spells you control can't be countered, and uh, non-token creatures you control have riot. This card is ridiculous, and do keep in mind if your creature does have riot, they enter the battlefield, their, their riot trigger goes off, and the Rhythm of the Wild trigger goes off, so they have two riot triggers going off. They do not stack, they happen in sequence. I um, kind of want to explain that, you know, that, that happens that way, uh, because your opponent can't counter the riot triggers, which is... Uh, Sort of interesting as well. So Rhythm of the Wild, one of the best gruel cards in the format. I think this is going to be a one uh, for Draft and for Seal. Once this hits a battlefield and your opponent has any sort of control in their deck, they're just those are just dead cards now. That's kind of ridiculous. Same thing for Standard. Once this hits a battlefield and they have no way to interact with Rhythm of the Wild, um, they just lose the match because they can't interact with their creatures anymore. They can't counter. They can't control. Um, this card is amazing. And probably the reason that control is going to be probably in check in Standard uh, as the format kind of progresses. Because you can get it out on turn two, which is ridiculous. Moving up here is Rebel Belt Runner, a 3-mana 3-3 three three Vaishina Warrior. Rebel Belt Runner can't be blocked by creature tokens. Very simple and straightforward, but very good. I feel like this card's probably going to be a uh, two-slot for us for Draft and for Sealed. I do think this card is quite good in Standard as well, since there will be kind of the Selesnya token list, the Orzhov token list, and we have, you know, some other token lists kind of going around in Standard right now. I think this is probably going to be a three for us in Standard too, so quite good all around. Um, could probably be in the more four range for us, pretty three or four for us for Standard, but I do think it's quite good being a great sideboard card against particular matchups for Standard, so pretty good for that. Pretty great for a draft for Sealed. Moving up here is Savage Smash, a three mana sorcery. Target creature you control gets plus two, plus two into an turn. It fights target creature you don't control. So I really like Savage Smash, gonna be a two for us in uh, draft and for sealed. Um, probably not gonna see any kind of play whatsoever in standard. Uh, maybe a four, maybe a five. I'm kind of thinking more four, kind of a little bit more playable than normal, because uh, of course it does give a plus two, plus two and fight. So very interesting for a gruel matchup there for a, like maybe a cyborg tech card. Um, but besides that, not going to see much play in standard, but still pretty good in draft and sealed. Pretty simple and straightforward again. Moving up here is Senate Guildmage, a two mana two two human wizard. You can pay one white, gain two life. You can pay one blue, draw a card, then discard a card. I really like this because it's so inexpensive to kind of get the Guildmage off here. Um, so it's going to be a three for me, though. Still, all the Guildmages kind of rank around three for me. Um, but this one, a lot higher than that. Um, probably in the two, maybe three. Uh, but I'm probably going to stick around the three. I do think it's probably in the two range, though, just because you can, you know, again, do this so cheaply, being able to draw a card, discard a card. So being able to do that in, in uh, Orzurius is very, very good in Draft and Sealed. So 
quite good for that format. As far as this card seeing play in standard, um, it's not. It's not going to see play in standard. We have lots of good ways to draw cards in standard and lots of ways to gain life. And a 2 mana 2-2 two -two that does that on a tap, just not great. Just not great for that format. Moving up here is Seraph of the Scales, a 4 mana 4-3 four angel flyer. You can pay white, gets vigilance into a turn. You can pay black, and gets death touch into a turn. And you can have afterlife for two if this card does die. So good card all around. Fantastic card, really. Um, so going to be a one for us in draft and sealed. I mean, it's a 4 mana 4-3 flyer. What more do you want? Uh, it has Vigilance or Death Touch. I mean, it's amazing. And it gives you two 1-1 flyers if it does die. Um, so for Standard as well, it's going to be a 2-drop slot too. Very good card all around. Just very powerful too. Um, really love this card for both formats. I um, think it's going to see a lot of play as well. Moving up here for us is Sharkto Crab. What a name. A 4 mana 4-4 four, four Fish Octopus Crab. 4 mana Adapt 1. Whenever one or more plus 1 plus 1 counters are put on Sharkto Crab, tap target player uh, creature and opponent controls that creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step so this is a very interesting card because the adapt and the cast is the same but it also gets a 5-5 five five and it also taps a creature down so if you do adapt the following turn you still get to attack in with a 5-5 five five that actually just tapped a creature down which is quite good i think this is a one for me in draft and sealed honestly um, very good in tempo very good in threat um i almost wish it had trample or something like that that'd be amazing um it's gonna be a three for me probably in standard again because it's so well costed and so well adjusted to the format i feel like this is going to be very very good in standard as well so i would definitely look forward to seeing this card in standard especially because it's whenever whenever one or more plus one plus one counters so if you put more counters on it you can just continually tap down other stuff on your opponent's side of the field and that's really interesting as well Moving up is Simic Ascendancy, a two mana enchantment. Pay three, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on a creature you control, put that many growth counters on Simic Ascendancy. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Simic Ascendancy has 20 or more growth counters on it, you win the game. Um, this card is very interesting, but I don't think it's going to see much play in Draft and Sealed. It feels like a card that really needs to be in a combo deck in Standard or Modern. Um, so four for me for uh, Draft and Sealed, maybe a three, kind of going up a little bit in Standard. But again, very hard to kind of get off frequently and you know effectively in both formats. I do think Ascendancy though is really fun since you can put plus and plus encounters due to its own ability on stuff and again trigger its growth mechanic as well. Moving up here for us is Sphinx of the New Prov. This is a four mana four three flyer of vigilance spells you can your opponent a cast that targets Sphinx cost two extra more to cast. I wish it was spells that target you or spells that target like creatures you control. That would make this card way better. Um, to me though, it's still really really good. Um, so I'm probably going to go with a two for us in the format here. I think it's quite good for being like just a decent top end attacker for you for draft and for sealed. Uh, for standard, it's going to be probably a four, maybe even a five, just a little inex like expensive for that format. Again, flying vigilance four three is fine, but we have so many better attackers at that rate uh, in that particular format. Moving on here, we have Sphinx's Inside. This is a four mana instant. Draw two cards, addendum. If you cast a spell during your main phase, you gain two life. Simple, effective. Um, I do like this card a lot in draft and sealed. Not as much in standard. This is going to be probably a two for me in draft and sealed. Um, being able to draw two cards with the ability to gain two life, not amazing, but being able to draw two cards on your opponent's end step in draft and sealed is quite good. So I like that for that particular format. Um, I don't think it's going to see much play in uh, standard like at all, really. So I'm going to give it a four there. Not a big fan of this in standard, but again, it may see play. But I think we have cards, you know, like Chemistry's Insight and that kind of stuff other than, you know, Sphinx's Insight. Moving up here, we have is Thunder Shaman. This is a four mana five, five giant shaman. Uh, it can't be blocked by more than one creature. And whenever Thunder Shaman deals combat damage to a player, destroy target artifact or enchantment that player controls. Very interesting as far as the ability here. Um, this is very cool for the best of one stuff for like maybe standard. However, I do think it's quite expensive for that particular format. So probably gonna be a two for me in draft and sealed. It's a four mana five, five. That's fantastic. And it can't be blocked by more than one creature. So it's gonna, you know, just <laughs> basically destroy whatever it attacks into uh, and then for uh, standard here for me probably going to be a four um, not as impactful as you might think it would be if it had trample it probably would be much better for the ability to kind of go off a little more reliably but besides that not as great for that particular format moving up here is syndicate guild mage this is our i think final guild mage uh, this is a, a two mana two two almost said five mana two mana two two human cleric you can pay two tap target creature with power four or greater tap five mana syndicate guild mage deals two damage to target opponent or planeswalker so very interesting card in that it helps you kind of get off with spectacle in draft and sealed for five mana as well as being able to tap something down for kind of uh if you want to get into orzov or maybe azurius kind of splash blue as well this could be a nice card to splash into your azurius list too since it can tap stuff down so very interesting for that um however i don't really like this card that much 
uh, in those formats. So again, all the guild mages, they kind of end up being around the three slot for me uh, for the uh, ranking here. And for standard, this is going to be a five. So unplayable in that format. You, you just can't dump five mana into a card and expect it to survive or expect it to do really anything other than, you know, what it's doing here with this card, which is basically nothing. Moving up here for this, we have Tessa Karlov, a four mana two four legendary creature, human advisor. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Creature tokens you control have Vigilance and Lifelink. This card is very good in uh, Draft and Sealed and very good in Standard. I think this card most likely for Draft and Sealed and Standard is going to be a one for us. So it's kind of amazing, um, especially into an Orozov Afterlife list in Standard. Played a little bit of that myself uh, in the uh, Ravnica Early Access event. So really loving this for that particular archetype. I do think uh, for Draft and Sealed, though, this card isn't as good, but still amazing if you do get into it, since it is still just a, a, a four mana two four, which is nice. And if you get any of your uh, tokens out, they have Vigilance and Lifelink as well. So pretty decent overall. Moving up here for us, as far as the next card is Theater of Horrors, a, a three mana enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. During your turn, if an opponent lost life this turn, you may play cards exiled with Theater of Horrors. You can pay four Theater of Horrors, deals one damage to target opponent or planeswalker um to me theater of horrors feels like a two um quite good overall i do think it's very powerful in drafted and for sealed for standard theater of horrors probably feels like a one feels like you can do a lot of stuff with this particular uh, card here in that environment i'm not so sure where it's going to see play obviously it's going to see play in a rakdos list but I'm not so sure what particular archetype it's going to see play in. Um, I do think that being able to, uh, you know, play exiled cards from this is amazing. Um, so I think this card is really, really fun. And again, if you have a lot of a lot of mana, so basically in a Jund list, if you have a lot of mana where you can kind of ramp into it, Theater of Horrors can just kind of go off for you and do a lot of good stuff. So very interesting card for that. And of course, in like Draft and Sealed, because it has the four mana ping one ability, it's really good in the mid to late game as well. Moving up here for us is Zagana Utopian Speaker, a four mana four four legendary creature, Merfolk Wizard. Whenever it enters a battlefield, if you control another creature with a plus one plus one counter on it, draw a card. You can pay six and adapt for four, and each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has trample. So a lot of stuff going on here. I think Zagana is quite good in Draft and Sealed, a huge bomb for you. So that's going to be a one for us for that. And I do think in Standard, it's going to be a three for us in that particular format. It is very good in the Merfolk list, uh, and it is also a wizard, so it could see a wizard deck as well. So very good card all around. And being able to turn this into an 8-8 eight eight if you don't have it like a plus one plus one counter on this just yet is very good. Now, do keep in mind, I did this uh, on the uh, stream. Um, you can actually adapt with counters already on top of it because the adapt trigger happens and then it kind of checks for the counters if you want to put more counters on it. So you could just waste six mana to do nothing, uh, which is what I did uh, during a stream. So don't do that. Don't be me. <laughs> Moving up here is Zertar Goblin. This is a two mana, two, two riot. Um, simple, straightforward, has haste, or it's a three, three. I think both of these are quite good for us, especially for two mana. So for me, it's going to be a two in drafted for sealed. And for me, it's also going to be probably a five in standard, just not that impactful to that format. Moving up here is Footlight Fiend, a one mana, one, one. Whenever it dies, it deals one damage to any target. Uh, being able to ping like this is very similar to how we have the uh, fanatical firebrand, the goblin that's in the former right now, the little pirate goblin guy. Um, very interesting, but again, this card needs to die for this trigger to happen, so attacking in with this and being able to get that death trigger is quite good, so I think this is probably going to be fine for us for, for draft for sealed, so being able to ping something for one point is nice, and being able to ping something again for standard is quite nice too. Um, I did put this at five in standard, but I think on like second thought, it might be a four, maybe even a three. It's very aggressive, and we'll see a ton of play in Iraq list or a mono red list. Moving up here for us is Rebel Slinger. This is a three mana two three with reach. I wish this had riot or something like that or some way to pump it a little bit. Um, it's okay. Slinger's fine. It's going to be a three for us in draft and for sealed. Uh, three mana two three with reach is fine. Uh, for standard it's unplayable. Not going to see any kind of play there but it's okay in draft and sealed. Moving up here for us is Scuttle Gator, six mana, six, six, Defender. It also has Adapt for uh, eight mana. Ooh, Adapt three for eight mana, wow. As long as the Scuttle Gator has a plus one, plus one counter on it, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender. Um, so it's attacking it as a nine, nine, which is amazing. Uh, but again, takes eight mana to kind of get there. So if you get an eight to eight mana in the uh, mid to late game in Draft and Seal, this card is amazing, kind of hilarious. And I'm going to go with a three here for us for drafting for sealed. As far as this card seeing play in standard, probably not going to. It's going to be a five for us in that particular format. Moving up here for us, we have a Senate Griffin. This is a four mana three, two Griffin flyer. When Senate Griffin enters the battlefield, scry for one. 
Um, simple, but I do like this card being a 3-2 flyer for you because, again, 3-2 flyer for four is great, uh, but being able to scry for one is just gravy on top of that. So for me, the Griffin's going to be probably around the three slot for draft and sealed and the five slot for standard. Again, just not going to see any kind of play for that format. Just a little too expensive there. Uh, we also have uh, the uh, Vigcopa, I think Vizcopa, Vizcopa, I think that's how you pronounce that. Vampire, a three minute, three one life linker. This card is like deceptively good uh, in draft and sealed. So going to go with probably a four here. Could be a three in draft and sealed, but because it only has one toughness, it's going to trade with something immediately. But being able to gain life for this card means it's going to be attacking it and you gain, you know, again, three life. So pretty advantageous for your particular deck list. Uh, for standard, it's going to be a five. Not that great. Uh, just can't really do much on that. So the next cards in this list are going to be the split cards. So give me just a sec. I'm going to cut and kind of turn these uh, sideways. All right. We have our split cards here. Bedeck and Bedazzle. Bedeck is a two mana instant target creature. Gets plus three, negative three into a turn. This is a good removal spell. And Bedazzle is a six mana instant. Destroy target non-basic land, but Dazzle deals two damage to target uh, opponent or planeswalker. Um, I really like Bedeck. I think it's a fantastic removal spell. going to be a two for me uh, for this card alone. Um, but Dazzle's fine. Uh, being able to kind of ping for the last two points of damage is quite good in uh, standard or in draft and sealed rather, not standard. Um, but for standard for me, probably going to be a three. I really like the versatility of this card, being able to be pretty good removal for us for Rakdos, as well as being pretty good removal for a non-basic land is, again, pretty decent in standard, um, like a Field of Ruin or Ascanta or whatever um, if, that we don't like. So bid deck is okay all around for a draft sealed and standard. So pretty good for that. Moving up here for us is Carnival to Carnage. This is a one mana and a four mana instant and sorcery. Carnival deals one damage to target creature or planeswalker and one damage to that opponent's controller. And Carnage is a four mana sorcery. Carnage deals three damage to target opponent. That player discards two cards. So basically a lightning, which is quite good uh, in the uh, draft and sealed environment. So gonna be a two for me in draft and sealed. Very powerful, very good card to get into in Riot, uh, in uh, Riot, in Rakdos. Uh, and for standard, probably gonna be a four for us. Just doesn't do as much as Bedazzle here, but still very powerful. Powerful uh, in kind of respecting the carnage here. Could see some play and some cyborg stuff uh, against maybe a control shell if the carnage does go off. Moving up here for us is Collision and Colossus. Collision is a two mana instant, deals six damage to target creature with a flying, and Colossus is a two mana instant. Uh, target creature gets plus four, plus two, and gains trample onto end of turn. Feels like Colossus there would get reach and trample because he's picking up a giant tree, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Collision Colossus is a three for us and drafting for sealed. And I think for standard, it's probably gonna be a five. Not as useful in that format. Um, just a little too, uh, I guess, specific. It could be a fun card, though, as far as uh, being a pretty decent uh, pump ability and a pretty decent removal, removal ability. So might see some cyber play, maybe some best of one play. But besides that, I don't think it's gonna see any kind of play. Moving up here is Concentrate and Consume. Concentrate is a two mana instant. Exile target card from a graveyard draw card and Consume is a four mana sorcery. Target player sacrifices a creature with, with the greatest power among creatures you can they control. Uh, you gain life equal to its power. Ooh, that was hard to read through. Um, I really like Consume on this card. Concentrate, not so much. Um, but I do think it's quite good overall. For me, it's going to be a three in draft and seal and a four in standard. Uh, just feels like one of those cards where it's going to be a great card and a great removal spell for you in uh, draft and sealed. And this could, of course, get rid of a Carnage Tyrant for you in standard, but that's a very specific ability uh, for a specific card. So won't really see much main board play, maybe some sideboard play, but not so much besides that. Moving up here for us is Depose, Deploy. Depose is two mana instant, tap target creature, draw a card, and Deploy is a four mana instant, create two one one colorless thopter artifact creature tokens with flying, then you gain life for each creature you control. You gain one life, not just life, you gain one life. Um, so Depose to me is going to be probably a two for a draft and seal. Depose I like a lot and deploy I like a lot as well. Being able to go wide with deploy or tap down with Depose, very good cards overall. Uh, for me, Depose and deploy is also going to be a three for standard. I think this card will probably see some play in some weird like blue white tempo list somewhere or maybe brew play. I think being able to kind of tap stuff in the early game and be able to make a bunch of tokens in the mid to late game is quite good. So this might see some play in a blue white temple list. Moving up here is Incubation and Incongruity. Incubation is a one mana sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Incongruity is a three mana instant. Exile target creature. That creature's controller gets a three, three green frog lizard creature token. 
Um, this is fine. I think this is okay. It's going to be a two for us in draft and sealed. And for standard, it's going to be a three for us as well. Um, not as powerful in standard, but I do think incongruity is quite good at being able to be a good removal spell for you in limited uh, and in standard uh, for Simic, especially because we don't really have that many removal spells in Simic colors. And incongruity is one of those few cards that it does give you, your, your opponent a good creature as far as giving it a three, three. But at the same time, um, you know, we're removing their biggest bomb and that's really all that matters. So turning a Lyra Dawnbringer into a frog is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and incubation is quite good as well in the early game being able to get again a creature card from among them the top five and putting it into your hand so very good for five mana i think this card is going to be seeing a lot of play in draft sealed and standard moving on for us here is uh repudiate and replicate repudiate is a two mana instant counter target activated or a, a triggered ability and replicate is a three mana sorcery it's a created token that's a copy of car target creature you control i like both of these cards as far as their abilities here i think it's gonna be a one for me uh, being able to counter target activated or triggered abilities for draft and seal is quite good and being able to replicate something on your side of the field is even better Replicate, I'm really leaning more towards Replicate for Draft and Sealed. As far as standard goes for Repudiate and Replicate, gonna be a two for me. Again, both of these things are very, very good, uh, but Repudiate is probably a little bit better in standard than Replicate, but both, again, are very, very powerful in both formats, uh, and it's gonna see a ton of play. And again, it is a rare, so you won't see it too much in Draft and Sealed, but if you do, it's gonna be quite good for you. Moving on here is Revival and Revenge. Revival is a two mana sorcery. Return target creature card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, and Revenge is a six mana sorcery. Double your life total. Target opponent loses half their life. Rounded up. Well, that's that's insane. <laughs> Very powerful. Uh, revival for me is going to be a two for draft and for sealed. If you get to go with a revenge on uh, draft and sealed, that's hilarious. Uh, basically, making your life total if it's like fifteen, it goes up to thirty, and your opponent if it's like ten, it goes to five. That's that's dumb. I'm, I'm kind of uh, in love with this ability here. I think it's hilarious. Um, Revival is really good as well, being able to get back a creature that does die that you want to bring back. So good for that. Um, I do think for standard, it's going to be probably in the three or maybe even four. Not as powerful. Revenge is uh, kind of a card you don't really want to be doing as much. In standard, it could be fun uh, for maybe a cyborg card in a more Orzhov token-based strategy. So kind of look out for that. But besides that, I'm not going to see much play for Revival in that format either. Moving up here, we have his Thrash and Threat. Thrash is two mana. It's an instant target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control i really like how it like uh, uh says here planeswalker so that means that you know you have a three three it's just gonna do three damage to your opponent's planeswalker which is quite good threat is a four mana sorcery create a four four red and green beast creature token with trample um really like threat as well gonna be a two for us in draft and sealed overall gonna be probably a four for us in standard but I do like both of these cards for both formats, as I think Threat is probably going to be leaning more towards the uh, the card archetype for uh, Draft and Sealed, and Thrash maybe towards the archetype for Standard. But both of them are doing pretty good things for both formats. Moving up here for us, I believe, is the last card. Yeah, the last card here out of the multicolor. Woo, so many multicolor cards. There were a ton here. Uh, we have Warrant and Warden. A Warrant is a two mana instant target attacking creature or blocking creature uh, on top of its owner's library. You put it on top of its owner's library. And Warden is a five mana sorcery. Create a four, four white and blue Sphinx creature token with flying and vigilance. I really like this card for draft and sealed. Reason being, it's really good in the early game and also in the mid to late game where you really need a threat in Azorius Tempo uh, or Azorius Control and those particular archetypes. And I think it's doing both of those things very well for Draft and for Sealed. As far as standard goes, probably gonna be a three, maybe even a four. Um, Again, very good in best of one stuff where you have lots of flexibility. So being able to kind of bounce something your opponent is doing is nice, uh, but also being able to uh, make a four four flyer with Vigilance is also pretty good as well. So I think this card's pretty good all around. Um, but those are all of the gold cards there. Uh, let me uh, flip this back and then also get into the artifacts. Alrighty, we're back with the artifacts here. We have Azurius Locket. These are our first artifacts. There's not a, a ton of artifacts in this particular format, just enough for, uh, you know, enough to, to sink your teeth into. This is a three minute artifact. You can tap for white or blue. You can pay four and sack it, draw two cards. All of the lockets will kind of kind of get through really quickly. Um, so I like the lockets here. They're pretty fun. They're gonna be a three for us in Draft and Sealed and a five for us in Standard. And I'm gonna have the, probably the same opinion about all of them in the format so let's keep on moving here gate colossus is an eight mana eight eight this spell costs one colorless less to cast for each gate you control gate colossus can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less and whenever a gate enters the battlefield under your control you may put gate colossus from your graveyard on top of your library this card to me feels really bad in draft and sealed however this card gets way better in standard played again played with a gate deck recently um gate colossus is hilarious in that deck list i think it's very fun 
fun as well. So love this card for the deck list for standard. So going to be a three for that particular format and a four uh, for uh, draft and sealed. Moving up here, we have Glass of the Guild Pack, a two mana artifact, multicolored creatures you control. Get plus one, plus one. This is probably the cheapest board wide pump ability we've seen in a long time. Going to be a two for me in draft and sealed. Going to be a two for me in standard as well. If you have a lot of multicolored creatures, this is a very good pump ability for you um, and very just, again, cheap all around. Very good card. Moving up here is Gruel Locket. Again, going to be a three for draft and sealed and going to be a five uh, for standard. Moving up here is the Junk Troller, a four mana zero. Six artifact creature golem defender put target cards from a gra uh, graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library so interesting ability here i don't think this is going to see much play in draft and seal it's going to be a four for us it's a nice wall um high alert makes this card a little bit better um, but again you need high alert and junk troller to make it kind of work um for a standard this is a little too expensive for us we have a lot of like really cheap defenders for the high alert in our kitties deck so this isn't going to see much play in that particular deck list Orzov Locket here is again three and a five, a three for draft and seal and five for standard. Again, tapping for the mana you want and drawing us two cards. Just fantastic overall. We also have Rakdos Locket again, three for draft and sealed and five uh, for standard. Again, just kind of simple and straightforward, but quite good as well. Scrabbling Scr uh, Claws here is a one mana artifact. You can tap it, target player exiles a card from their graveyard, and then play, you can pay one and sacrifice Scrabbling uh, Claws, exile target card from a graveyard, draw a card. So, Claws feels more like a card meant for standard. Um, really not that many cards in the format that can actually interact with the graveyard besides the Claws here in the, the set uh, for Draft and Sealed. So it's going to be a four there, maybe even worse as a five there in standard. So not going to see much play in either format. Um, not really sure why this card even exists, honestly. <laughs> We have Screaming Shield here. This is a one mana artifact equipment. Um, equip creature gets plus three plus or plus zero plus three and has tap two and or tap and two. Target player puts a top three cards for the library into their graveyard. You can equip for three carless. Uh, it's okay. I mean, the ability to uh, do plus zero plus three is fine. The ability to mill in this card is very interesting and like odd. So it's going to be a four for me for draft and for seal. Kind of respecting just that zero three uh, and going to be a four for me for standard. Kind of respecting the mill, but. Both of those things are expensive. It's two mana to mill for three, so I'm not so sure if this is going to see much play. It is one mana to play it and three to equip it, so again, just kind of expensive all around. If it was a little cheaper, it might have been a little bit better. Moving here for us is Simic Locket. Again, going to be a three for Draft and Seal and going to be a five for Standard. Uh, then we have Sphinx of the Guild Pack. This is a seven mana five five. Sphinx of the Guild Pack is all colors, flying, and hex free from mono color, which is very interesting and quite good for us in uh, most situations. It is kind of expensive though, so it's gonna be probably in the four to three slot for us for draft and for seal. Um, it gets a little worse though uh, in standard because again, it is seven mana, so it is quite uh, expensive, but it is very easy to kind of cast because it is colorless, so do keep that in mind. You might run into this a little bit more in standard, but for me, it feels a little unplayable. And the last card for the artifacts here is Tomb, or Tome, not Tomb, Tome of the Guild Pack. Five mana artifact. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, draw a card, you can tap and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So this, uh, the mana here adding it is actually making this basically a four mana artifact, which is quite good. Um, I think this is going to be a three for draft and sealed and probably a three again for standard. Feels like a card that would see a lot of play, especially in standard and a multicolored list. Uh, maybe a hero of precinct one deck list with this card would be pretty good as well. Being able to draw a lot of stuff um, and just kind of powerful overall in that format. But those are all the artifacts. Let's move on to lands really quickly here. They're already kind of slotted in. We're just kind of lightly talking about them, but Azurius Guildgate, very nice, very pretty. And again, just like with the uh, Ra uh, Guilds of Ravnica, we have two different versions of the different kind of guild gates. We have Blood Crypt here, a great shock land for us coming back. Um, fantastic for Rakdos. Breeding Pool, another great shock land for us coming back for Simic. Uh, Gateway Plaza, again, coming back from Guilds of Ravnica, a very good card and a good card to kind of help you kind of get into any kind of mana you need to. So kind of a mana fixer for you. It's also a gate too. Uh, we have Godless Shrine, another Shockland. Uh, Gruel Guild Gates, again, the two types of Guild Gates. I think this one is probably my favorite as far as the art for the Gruel. Very fantastic. We also have here Hollowed Fountain, a, another Shockland for us. Very nice. Uh, then we have Orzov Guild Gate, another Orzov Guild Gate. So both of them really nice looking. Uh, Plaza of Harmony is a land here. Uh, it's a rare. It enters the battlefield. If you control two or more gates, you gain three life. You can tap for colorless, or you can add one man of any type that a gate you control uh, could produce. So very nice for us for a card for like draft and sealed. So I think I'm going to go with the uh, Plaza Harmony here. Uh, probably going to go with a four for draft and sealed. It isn't as good in that format, but a three in standard where you can make a gate deck list. So pretty good for that particular format. Uh, Rakdos Guild Gate, very nice. Uh, and Rakdos Guildgate once again. 
We also have Simic Guildgate. I really like this. It feels it's giving me some Zendikar vibes. So this this art here, uh, and then Simic Guildgate again, and then we have Stomping Ground, which is the last card of Ravnica Allegiance. And there we go. We've reached the end. <laughs> So many videos, so much time, a lot of stuff to talk about uh, and a lot of stuff to review. So I think what I'm gonna do now is like put up my entire spreadsheet of like all the things that I think about for each card. Um, I even kind of include the Planeswalker cards as well and the uh, the Biobox promo as well. I'm not gonna talk about them in this video, but I will show it on the screen uh, with the Excel spreadsheet I did make. Um, but this set was a lot of fun to go through. I really like this set a lot. I think it's quite powerful for draft and for seal. There's a ton of stuff as well for standard implications too. Um, just a lot of fun to kind of get into. And I'm really excited to start kind of posting our deck lists and uh, deck techs uh, for uh, the new standard once it comes out uh, next week. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Like, of course, the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got a ton of video of content coming in the future. And uh, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on my channel. It's Clever Fox, and I have the link in the description. And if you want to follow me on Twitch or for streaming and that kind of stuff, I have a Twitch stream as well. Link is in the description. Follow me there. I stream every Monday and Wednesday, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.